Okay, so here we are with the car at Brands Hatch. I've uh, been out a couple of times, um, all seems fine. Um, I actually went out with an instructor and that was really interesting. He was showing me um, damp and wet lines around the track. Um, so, uh, yeah, great fun and bizarrely quite stressful. Um, I got quite sweaty because I was uh, concentrating so much. Um, there's the car I raced last year, 41, still going strong. A few dents down the side. And, um, yeah, I'm just about to go out again in mine. The car ran absolutely faultlessly and uh, the only problem I had was that the coolant level dropped after the first run but I think it's just an airlock in the system that I hadn't bled out because after that we checked it on the after the second run and it was fine. Uh, the other minor annoyance is if you look at the brake indicator on the overlay here um, on the left hand side it's not registering any brake pressure. Now I know it's getting the signal from the ECU um, because it's appearing in the data logger and uh, so this is just a problem with the configuration of the handicap um, setup. And you do this thing where you sort of have to chain these settings together to get it to feed right through to the handicap overlay and I've obviously done something wrong in that part of the setting. This was still quite greasy, you can see, I don't know if you can see this like shine on the track and I spent the session following the damp and wet lines that I've been, I'd been shown, although if you look at where I went around clearways there I don't think it was quite wide enough. Um, I was watching some of the other drivers, like particularly I watched Mark, I followed Mark Burton around and he went right around the outside of clearways um, and I sort of move out to the outside as I go around and that was a bit too tight around Paddock Hill Bend there actually but there was a drying line you can see if you look at closely at the track you can see that it's drying in places but of course this is when it's really tricky um, being a mixture of wet and dry um, so uh, <laughs> I did a, a I did oh yeah you can see I did a 107.39 that last lap um, now at this point this was quite embarrassing because I decided I was going to come into the uh, pits and uh, so I come down here I think this is the lap uh, yeah indicate to turn into the pits and then stick it sideways <laughs> um, and that was because again I was turning too close across the apex of the corner and uh, going too fast but yeah no big deal Now we come to the most embarrassing part of the day. Um, behind me is car 41, the car I raced last year. And uh, Simon, I think, was driving and he said he was trying to hunt me down. Uh, he's on Rain Sports and I'm still on the semi-slick uh, Nankans. And he was able, he did seem to be able to get around the corners faster than me, um, certainly some of them. So uh, he's getting closer and closer and I'm thinking, oh, I'm going to have to try and stay ahead of him. And then, of course, <laughs> I go and do a stupid thing at Clearways yet again. And uh, he just uh, trundles past and leaves me there. So that was a bit embarrassing, but it was all good fun. And uh, it, was, uh, it was a good comparison, actually, to see the difference. The cars running on the rain sports were definitely running. They ran both of the 4040 cars on rain sports. Uh, certainly for the first part of the session and they were definitely fast around the track perhaps not surprisingly um, faster than the Nankangs um, their NS2Rs well I hope you found that interesting it's quite difficult generating content at this time of the year um, especially as the car's done and um, the you know all we've got really is uh, track days and test days until the start of the season at the end of April but I have a test day set up for Silverstone um, at the beginning I think it's second week of March so um, I'll produce some more content then and if I do anything on the car obviously I'll I'll drop that onto uh, my channel as well